been five years since I um, interviewed him on the show before. So let's say hello to Tinchy Strider. How are you? Hello, hello. What's happening, world? I'm good, thank you. Uh, we were just talking a little bit before then. It's kind of uh, a bit boring in lockdown at the moment. Everyone wants it to, to end, don't they? Yeah, everyone's trying to trying to find out. Like, there's no day. When is it ending? What we don't know. But that's what's mad. But the only thing that keeps me not only thing, but one of the things that keeps me positive in is that the whole world's going through it. So nobody's yeah. alone. We're all alone. We're all lonely, but we're not alone. Yeah. What are you doing yeah, to keep yeah. busy then? Are you working on some music and stuff at the moment to to keep you occupied? Um. Yeah. All see music because it's like actually my hobby is my job. It's my profession. So forever, ever, and you enjoy your hobby, right? That like, you're just always doing it, but. Never stop making music. So yeah, there's definitely new projects coming soon. But first thing though, the clothing star hood, that's coming first, man. Yeah, I've got some new bits coming and I'm excited, I'm nice. excited. Yeah. I wanted to go back to kind of the earliest memory for you in regards to music. So where your love and your passion uh, for music actually came from, is there something that stands out for you? Um, I'll say generally that because cause I'm the youngest, I will like my siblings and that, my older brothers, what they listen to, my friends I grew up with. So. I wouldn't say there's some like a time where something stood out for me. For, okay, well, this is when you're gonna start making music. It's like coming up from where I grew up in East London. It's like everyone just MC, like MC spitting bars, as we say. And when I was going into year seven, that six weeks holidays, that young, everyone just freestyling. I thought, mm, I like this, I like this. And to see when your hobby becomes like a like your profession, it's just naturally there's something like a fly or something in here. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't, I think it was, if it was a B or something, I'll run away, but it's, it's not B. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, so going back to your very earlier career, I know you've done uh, lots of stuff, but you, were you part of um, Roll Deep initially when they, they started out? Um, you know what, Rusquad, that's my people. That's why I was part of Rusquad, but Roll Deep, because obviously I've done a lot of stuff with, say, Wiley, Flo, Dan, yeah. Dizzy, and I've done a lot of performances, let's say, shows, so everyone thought, right, what, he's Roll Deep. I was round them, but I was never in Roll Deep officially now. Oh, okay. But they're cool people, man. And I guess they're older than us, so they're a bit young, older, we're the younger ones, so when I, yo, you come to this rave, yeah, man, and I thought, some, these early stages, I couldn't get to a lot of raves because of my age, height, everything, like, but yeah. somehow they've gone in there, and it was, it was wicked, man, it was wicked. Great memories. And I was going to say, a lot of people will, will know you from your debut uh, studio album uh, in 2007. Now, it was kind yeah. of a, a big thing for you because a lot of people were introduced to, to you and your music. So when you were making that album, do you have fond memories? Because it must have been an exciting, uh, overwhelming time. Yeah, when I was making Star on the Hood, Star on the Hood, my first album, but like you said, oh, seven times. It wasn't, I got memories of recording stages. And when I hear some of the tracks back now, it reminds me that music has no sell-by dates or no expiry dates. That's how you know you make a good music. And because everything I was speaking about then, I'm thinking, whoa, like, I can still relate now and I think why was I saying that because you realize that that's what you're at in life and you think whoa and what was so good about it I wasn't I didn't wake up and think okay um let me start and make an album I was making tracks and like I thought actually yeah let's put an album together and then it became like kind of thought before I said to my mate the other day I think I've got I've got like a, a couple of tracks of classics to me he said no bro like you've made a classic album because your second album um, Catch 22 like was more successful and the overgrounds so I feel like it just overshadowed the first so yeah it was a great time though, a great time though. And obviously talking about you, you just mentioned your second album. Um, that became such a big success. Now, you it, it was almost a different style for you as well because you went from the roots that a lot of people know you from straight over to mainstream. Um, did you yeah. have any kind of worries about going mainstream in, in terms of maybe losing your, your core audience and your fan base? Mm, I kind of, as it was happening, because I was in it, so I didn't yeah. really take a step back of the wall because it naturally happened. I didn't one day think, okay, let me switch up my style and because I'm always looking forward to different things. But like I say, like you have to see wherever you come from, your core, your home. Even humans, we grow up one day, we grow up and move out at your mom's house. So you grow up, but home's home. You always be, yeah. you always go back and stick in. You know what I mean? So I've had that attitude. I'm like, I always want to do something more, man. Because if you do the same thing forever, you might get bored. So like, just make sure you know the core and what's around you. And like I say, with what we do before, it wasn't like even making tracks and trying to get charged. Just like emceeing and going to get reloads and raves. That's it. Like, okay, get say this lyric, like short bars and not really concept songs like that. But when I got to that stage, my first album, I kept trying to grow. And when I work with different producers, they might not come from the scene I come from. So we meet halfway and create, create, create. That's like when I met Fraser T. Smith, when I made like most of Catch Me Too with Fraser. It's like when we done number one, take all the like, single songs that charted, it's like we didn't think, okay, what can we make? It just naturally came together and 
that's the best thing man. when you don't force it it feels better and the thing is that really did take you to another level because you became a household name um and obviously i want to know what it's like to get your first uk number one because the song number one with uh dappy it had hit written all over it um so Thank when you. you first got the song and you found out you're going to work on it what were your thoughts because did you write the song did he come to you how did it come about um, with number one, like I was saying, Fraser T. Smith, the producer, yeah. I've done a few tracks with him, right? The first one we released was, I think, um, was it Strider, man? Strider, my dad, and Fraser, like, a while ago in the studio. And then after that, I think, take me back with Tyler Cruz, that went to number three. And then I was back in the studio. He just makes the beats. It's not like, oh, I've got a beat. What do you think you want to do? We're going to the studio together, creating a beat, or if you're going to write ideas of the songs. And then, obviously, Dappy. I thought, yeah, I want Dappy, man, Dappy. And then we linked up. It was cool. We come in the studio, we just vibing back-to-back -back ideas. And then, we just have that. Say, for example, it might be sound like, um, Dappy might be saying, like, you're the one, but we thought, mm, that's okay. But then after we just sit back and come, you know what? No, number one, it's more hitting. Like, number yeah. one, and then simple things like that. So when you don't rush, you're like, okay, could it be that, like, you're the one? See, uh, that's that like, didn't hit as much. So just little things like that. And then when we made number one, as you said, like, it's like a wall, like suddenly. But when you got a number one, it's like the last guy on so far, she don't even get a chance to celebrate in the moment. Cause everyone's like, okay, you gotta go do this interview, perform there, perform there. Then next thing you know, whoa, like you're the biggest that you got a number one. That was number one for a month. It was number one. So I, feel, I didn't understand that you got the biggest selling record in the UK for a whole month. Didn't sink in. So yeah, I thought, wow, I'm grateful. So yeah, that makes me just it drives you more to keep going, keep going. It's a, it's a thin land. I talk a lot. <laughs> it's like a thin land where you could be like, okay, now you've succeeded so much. Now anything less than a one is that mean you're failing? That could be on your mind for war. So do I have to standardly keep getting that? But then I'm thinking, I'm still young. It's my second album. So luckily you got good people around you. Like, no, no, focus, man. Whatever you did before, you loved it. So stick to what you love. And then that's what I do, man. I was going to ask that because the second album was just, it was insane in regards to what it did for you. You had two UK number one singles on it. Um, Thank you. And, you know, people loved it. But the third album for you didn't have the same success that, that the second. So I was going to actually ask you, if you're up there and you're on that high, how did it feel when you had the kind of critical response from the third album? Did part did it kind of make you feel a little bit like, you know, I, I'm giving up? Or did it actually make you more determined to drive forward? Um, tell the truth, that giving up, I've never really heard of that. <laughs> no, nice. I've never wanted for I'm um, giving up. It was more of a thing of like, well, whoa, like, because that album there, after obviously, because of the success that Catch 22 had, I was the biggest selling male artist in the UK. Yeah. To, so to, that's not easy to keep up with. Okay, whoa. Well, then you make an album, you work with different people. I have so many tracks who I didn't end up using. And then you bring something new, like, cool, cool. But then my first single of them, of um, first track, people said, like, why are you calling it first track? Are you trying to say three tracks, you're out? I'm like, no, I'm striking the third time. It's my third album. So there's a lot of things on my mind. Okay, well, he got a song called, uh, even before I came back to first track again, even with number one, before it came out, I was like, well, you just had a song that went to number three. Now you're cheeky. You got a song called number one. What if it doesn't go to number one? I said, the song's about a number one in your life or wherever you are. It's not about charting number one. But yeah. it's the side of the world, isn't it? So when I got to first track, there's a lot of pressure. I think, damn, this ain't happening. That ain't. But then, then I check it now. I think, like, in my system, went to number 10. Like, where I've come from, we don't know chart music. So it's like, now I've got different pressures to keep up with. You know what I mean? And then you do that and you drop sound like game over. And then it's that like, people thinking, oh, is that on the same album? Is that, is that, it's confusion to everyone that yeah. so that was the little thing i had to learn but i thinking i took more pluses than negatives but it's not easy because there's a place and a time where you think you feel a bit alone i also feel a lot feel like nobody understands what you're feeling well about your call cool, man like what so how about you maybe why did you why did you not bring this song out why did i'm like yeah you can say that now if i brought that song out but why did you bring that song out and then make sure mine go everywhere everywhere so I, i've learned i learned a lot from that experience i was going to say it seems like you're very switched on as well because a lot of people have maybe two or three years uh, at huge success and then it, sometimes it can fade off. But with you, you've maintained uh, for Thank years you. in this industry. And I think that's probably because your ability to actually learn and really understand the business to, to move forward. Yeah, man, that's a key part. And like I always say, good, keep, um, keep close, good people around you that you can speak to as well. Because not everyone is always telling you, yeah, man, like, like we say, like a yes, man. That, no, that's good, man. Everything's agreeing. People around me that tell me, no, I don't, obviously in my opinion, but I don't think you should do this. I don't, and my mind's always been wired. Like I said, I'm always thinking, thinking on the business side as well. You know what I mean? Because when sometimes people might not see you like in their face musically, because they're so used to you be consistently on the TV here and there, but 
we don't artists, we don't control the TV channels or the radio. We don't control what they play or what you see. People say, oh, are you still making music? Uh, it's the question, are you still hearing my music? No, I'm still making music. It's a different yeah, thing, man. It's like, and it's like, it's not easy to take because you think, whoa, but nobody can hear me no more, man. Does that mean I'm not doing something right? I'm not, but then you think, you haven't changed anything you was doing. It's the climate and the world changes. So don't change, but adjust to the changes. Yeah. And uh, one of my favourite songs was actually Never Leave You because it was, um, again, it was really different for you. It's not what people would expect yeah. from Zinchi Strider. So when they came to you with that song, um, because it is re like a real good pop song, were you ever a bit like, this is really different, but like you were just happy to be part of it? What were your initial thoughts when that was um, to you? That's, that's what I was saying. Luckily for me, most songs that is my song, it's never a song that um, I was a part of. If it's my song, I, mean, I kind of started it. I, like, yeah. I want to do a song like this. So I'm with the Fraser T. Smithers again. I said, like, we like real cool, cool friends. And I'm like, yo, Aunt Fraser, man, what do you think? Like, yeah, man, this and that. And then you might start the beat roughly. Then I thought, mm, let's try this. I got an idea for this that I want to talk about. Because when you hear Never Leave You, we got Tyra Cruz as well, because he was part of writing that song on a chorus. And he's like, like, what do you want to talk about? And in my, in my verse, I said something about, yo, yo, I've been here right there in front of both streets, late night, trying to write my saying, go see the king here. And then that's what the song's about. But when it says, I'll never leave you, it's not like I'm talking about a girl. I'm not talking about where I've come from, I'll never leave. That's why like, yeah. so, songwriting is so clever. You can put something there when people can think, oh, because I'm still loving you like it was the first time. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a girl, right? But if you hear what I'm saying in my verses, I said, I've been here, right here on the Bow Streets late night, trying to write my own saying, go sleep the king here. Music world on my own feet. I'm doing my LPA to you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Getting a live yeah, session. Yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But that's, that's, that's what you learn from. Because I think, like I was saying, like, I watched um, a few things that say people are look up to respect musically and their journeys. And I was thinking, everyone goes through things that you just don't understand till you're in it. What to have to actually cope with it. And because you're making, say, for example, Never Leave You, like, you like that song. You said, I love that song. I perform that song till this day. I'll never stop because. I see what it does to some people and I'm like, if I can speak something on stage and it's relating to someone, even one person, it's made my, it's made my day because like, there's what I live by as well. I'd rather 100 core than 100,000 on show. Yeah. And you can just tell by speaking to you how much music means to you and the fact you have such an input in it. So when it comes to making songs and you perform them live and you hear the crowd sing the lyrics back to you, what kind of feeling does that give you? Because that must just be the most incredible uh, feeling. That's, that's, that's untouchable, that feeling. You think, whoa, that's why, like, you can keep performing, like, day by day. I'm like, even like you said, like, number one is, like, obviously the biggest track I've had. And that's 2009. I perform it today. It's still as loud and it's still, like, yeah. people still. And when you people come up to you, they've got their, your lyrics tattered on their bodies. I'm like, it's mad to think, whoa, what I was feeling, I wrote that. And then you related to you and got tattooed on you because it helped you through some parts of your life and it's deep, it's deep. And like, one of the best um, moments I've had performance was, I think one of my first sold that towards Catch-22 is in, I think, um, Shepherd's Bush Empire. And my mum was there. I think the first time she might have seen performing and she's seen all these people singing. I'm like, this is special because my mum see me starting and then she's thinking, what, like, is this what it really is? Like, everyone's yeah. singing. She's thinking people are going crazy from what my son's singing on stage. It's like, yeah, so them moments you can't, you can't, you can't relive them, man. You can't. Great time. And something that was really unexpected, I think, to a lot of people was when um, you actually collaborated with the Chuckle Brothers. Now, oh, yeah, it was yeah, something yeah, yeah. that you wouldn't have expected. So, how did that actually come about? You two, uh, you know, you working together? You know what? It was a thing. I think I was on. Um, was it like a Keith Lemon show? I think I don't okay. know what show it was the TV show, and then they were there. The Chuckles respect always, man. And then it was like a thing where. I think I took a picture with them and just a picture posting and someone said, what, um, what, I know you, man, I know you're up to something. I know you got a song. I said, Chuckle Brothers, I haven't got a song with them. Like, then I know, I said, no, I'm, I'm glad I met them, but I, we all grew up knowing the Chuckle Brothers. I know. I think it was SBTV, Jamal Edwards. He messaged me and said, oh, no, no, you got, you got, you got, you got a song. You got, no, he said, please, just let me shoot the video. I said, bro, I haven't got a song. Shoot what video? He said, no, I'm shooting it. I said, he gave me an idea. I thought, okay, yeah. And I was hollering at them, the Chuckles, and then they come. Gary and Paul both and I thought like me and my boy um, King David that Danger is that like, let's make something they come to the studio my studio and then we made the track in like half hour they were so quick and they was telling me their first TV show lab TV show they done was like 86 that's when I was born I'm like wow and you lot are still here so you learn from them how they're so professional and then they were so quick like say they wrote their lyrics I'm like okay say it this way that way and then they've done it we've done a video everything. they're cool people man really cool 
So no one expected that, but like I'm saying, with that, all that, all that was made from that song, bringing it out, we all went to Cherry, went to Sickle Cell Cherry. And it went viral as well. It was just because people, I mean, you had Tinsley Strider, someone that people have loved for years, and then you've had the Chuckle Brothers that, again, people yeah. love for years and, you know, were part of childhood. And bringing the two together, it yeah. strangely really worked. That's real, seriously, yeah. it just worked for what? And even like, big them up all the time, because they even told me they, they perform it sometimes. I've never performed it before. But they said they perform it. Everyone said to me, to you, to me, to you, bro. To me, I said, like, whoa. And they showed me some clip. I thought, this is getting off. And they're wearing the Stone Hood t shirts that they got from me and all that. They don't understand what this means. That like, this is that. And then when there was a round that was shooting a video, a few people saw them like, what? Is that the chuckles? Is that, well, you know the chuckles on that. Like, I didn't think I did, but yeah, that's the chuckles and special times, man. I know growing up, you were, uh, you really liked football. Um, yeah. and, and you played it as well. So did, did, uh, didn't you actually get to perform live at the U uh, UEFA Champions League final? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, um, what year was that? My brain's not the best when it comes to years, but it was the year where it was Man United, you know, that's my team, versus Barcelona. And I had to do, like, the, um, the intro. I come out with my boy, and then Hussein Bolt came out with us at special times. And then I think in, like, they said write a little freestyle to the intro thing, I think. But I'm a United fan, so it's going to be a bit biased. So yeah. I done something like, like, yeah, but this is a bit too one way, so I had to just change up. I just said, um, United versus Barca. Tonight we see who's the master. Celebration, not disaster. Just like there or there, there or there. Just like and there's a you pick, and then I thought, wow, like. And then before I start thinking, I'm a United fan, but how they was warming up the Messi and them, lot, I'm thinking it's over, man. It's it's over before it starts. It's, it's scary. I'm thinking that I've just started from just like MC in my bedroom, like down to youth clubs, and I love football. That's that's my heart, and then. Now I'm performing here, like, wow, yeah, yeah, that was great. One of those pin... Uh, I'm glad you managed it, that's something I forget, I forget. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Joe, we've had that a lot, we've been doing these interviews with people and they say that actually when they talk about things they've experienced, they kind of forget and it's nice to actually relive it. Yeah, it's such a that nice reminder for a while, like, because sometimes I forget that that's not a small thing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's huge. Is, man, it's huge, but I just kind of, yeah, even like, for example, when um, people are like, what's the biggest place you performed, I'm like, the biggest I've done, I performed at um, Glastonbury Pyramid Stage was when Beyonce was headlining and I was opening up. But I figured at this time, all these people here, no one's not there to start when you're opening up. I'm like, this is a huge stage. I'm like, I don't care if they don't know my music like that. I'm on this stage and all that. But then at the same time, performing in a club where it's more intimate, it's much more fun. Yeah. So it depends what you like, what you want. Yeah. I didn't grow up in that, that festival world. But when I'm performing, I'm like, yeah, this is wicked. Whoa. I can keep saying, I just start from my bedroom. My mum's out, small room, so yeah. Special. And another thing um, that you did as well, which um, one of the biggest shows on TV was, of course, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And that was, it was nice because people got, you know, got to see you because normally, you know, yeah. we hear your music, but we didn't really know the guy behind the music. And it, you just came across as such a genuine, nice guy. So what are your memories of that in there? Thank you. Um, the Get Me Out of Here, see what, what I always say, people ask me the first question, what, what? Is it, is it as bad as it looks? I'm like, no, no, it's not, it's not. It's actually worse. Really? Yeah, really. Because you see <laughs> half an hour of a 24-hour day. You see half, you see like 30 minutes of what the TV choose to put on, on the telly. So you don't see what we're going through. And it's like, the, hard, the hardest parts about that was like the um, hunger and boredom. Because like 10 celebrities, then everyone's got their celebrity ways yeah. in one place. And you don't know no one. So people might not get along and you're just um, hungry. That leads to anger. That leads to boredom and you don't know who to talk to you that like, and it's all it's all weird but then and, and people that one thing they didn't mention yeah like people at home wouldn't know this but when you go to the jungle you're only allowed to take um how many three pairs of underwear three wow you have to free. wash them in the in the water you have to wash them dry them out if you get if the, if the public vote for you to go do a trial the next day all your things all gooey gooey you might not want to wear them but now nah, yeah. you got picked so you're gonna do so you have to go wash it wear it and then and the water that you drink you have to like boil it and then wait for a bit before you drink it it's not easy don't get given anything when they come and check your mic the next morning to see if everything's working they got tapes around their watches so you can't they don't you can say whatever you want to them you can swear at them and their face they're saying a word to you wow and i'm like i don't want to complain when i say you know what sorry can you please tell me the the date please this time i want to wish my dad a happy birthday i've been slight they're like um well you can say i'm a celebrity get me out of here if you want to wish your dad a happy birthday but like, it's like wow. mm, it's like so I'm not going to leave. Oh, Tinchi left because he wanted to wish his dad happy birthday. No, nah, that wasn't going down right. So I thought, yeah, it's okay then. But I won't really try to do that. I thought, 
I'm okay, but I was trying to work out the date time. You don't know the date or the time or nothing. So even like even like when you get like a what we get to eat, like the like rations of rest, like a handful, if my small hand is like half of that each person. So when you go do a trial, you get there's ten people, you have to get ten stars. If you come back with seven stars or whatever, that's a lot. If you come back with three stars, it's only three meals. Then we're like, don't worry, done well, but no, you didn't. You didn't. We're hungry. <laughs> yeah, so it's not it wasn't easy, but it was fun, it was fun. Cause I got it got to like as you said, like there's no shades, no chain, no. It's just you get to see me, or you have a love or hate me for who I am. That's what I want to go on it for. So at least people that like you, so he's genuine, or he's this. That whatever you think is what who I am. So I want to go there, man. Yeah. And I think you changed the the perception because I think a lot of people used to maybe assume that people who work in in music or or grime music or uh, rap would be a certain way and then you've come in and you've got mm. you know the most amazing manners you would always help other people put everyone else first and i think for a lot of people they were just kind of like wow what a, what a real nice guy yeah no it's just it's just the thing i always say i'm like that just the way i was raised just from home yeah. and just I was raised correctly and i always feel like like there's a way way where everyone's been boxed in like no you're not allowed to do this no you're from here so you can but who writ them unwritten rules yeah why don't we change that you know what i mean like that's what I said. If you go on this, like another thing, look at it this way: is that they pick ten celebrities in the UK to go there, and some other shows that I might, oh, I want you to come there. Some shows they, like, oh, you go there because your career's not going well. But you understand where, like other shows, I'm not like saying dropping names, but other TV shows might offer like triple um the jungle offered. But I said no to that because yeah. I'm like that's a bit more like when you go to shows where in the jungle you don't have no alcohol, you don't. So when you drink alcohol, people act different. People get trials to do mad things, and I'm like, this ain't that. This is like survival of the fit. So go there, do this, like get your food. If you do a trial one day, you might get like a bit of like, they tell you, you like, don't worry, you want some wine or orange juice? So I'm like, orange juice, because wine, you want a party, and there's no music here, there's no, there's nothing. I just want orange juice. So my mind was like that. <laughs> yeah, it was cool people in there as well, man. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. And I wanted to go, I mean, over the years, you, you've been releasing music, but last year you released an EP um and you're back uh, you know with your new music and it felt different because listening to it you just get the impression sometimes when you listen to music that you it felt like you were really content with what you were doing and it was real personal to you so talk yeah. us through that ep with, you know what's what were your feelings behind it um change the ep was called change and like kind of self-explanatory it's like yeah things change and i used to be like well and if i don't change like this before what made me feel like change okay first thing i had to do our blessings that changed everything. Priorities changed, like you got a different drive and you're happier again, like you know what I mean? And misses everything. So you're good, like life's good. And then you start thinking, but I've always like from when I started making music, it's never been like you might like since you done like something on um Starring Hood before that, if you knew before that, and then Catch 22. Some people just heard of me from number one. Is it that's when I asked them, when the first thing you heard number one, it's not their fault. They might be younger, but I'm like, and then so don't be afraid to change, man. I thought I'm going through a lot of things personally. I just had a child, music's changing enough, and, and the world's going crazy. The world's changing daily. I'm like, the truth is that whatever happened, like this second one, I just said to you, no, we can't get it back. We can't. Yeah. You have to accept the change. So I thought, you can't, you can't pause real, you can't pause real life, and you can't rewind it. It just goes forward to change. And, you know, with the, the album, um, it, it just showed how versatile you are as an artist because there was a bit of soul in there at times and it, everything yeah. about it was just powerful. And I think to come back with that Thank as you. an EP was just a real statement to people because it kind yeah. of, a little bit was back to your original roots and then it had some, some added extras. So I think it was really good. So are there plans for new music uh, going forward? Oh, yeah, always, man. Always. Like I said, I never stop recording and like, because like Lewis is such a cool person I feel like if it was another time I'll just play something right now but I hold tight I hold tight I hold tight but it's a thing of like um I work with different producers so that we change as a new people I was working with, so we just connected and then it comes out naturally I didn't think um, I want to do like you might make a couple free song few songs and then be like I like the sound so let's just keep that on there and when you're making a project it might be another like 10 songs that I didn't use like yeah. I told you, I've got a whole album that I've never put out. No one's ever going to hear it because it's not my life right now anymore. And and when you're in that certain stage in your career as well, like when you work with other people, they're like, well, this producer charges this much. Yeah, but come on, man, you're Tinchy, man. you got all this money. I'm like, I'm not with Universal anymore. They might pay you that money that I owe them in the long run. So let's, let's be personal now, isn't it? Let's, like, it's independent. You have to know where, set yourself a budget and just know what you're going for and be willing to risk the like, lose before you gain. 
that's my attitude. I was like, don't be afraid to lose. No. Yeah. Uh, music is a massive, you know, massive part of your life, but also so is a businessman. You know, you are a businessman. You, you've worked on lots of different things. So where did your love of, of business come from? Because I guess that's something that just happened organically. You know, you, you yeah. had your clothing brand, you things that you're interested in, you've managed to make it, you know, a business. Yeah, man. Like, like you said, it's, it, it initially started from the clothing that, the Star and Hood album, we just done a few, me and the management at the time, just done a few t-shirts to kind of promote. And at the same time, when I supported a few tours at the time, we was selling them. And whoever was making them for, you know what, we'll keep this money to kind of pay for hotels to go around and like do the show to support it. So it was all that business mind from early. We well, could do that, do that. And then obviously going on from that, that grew and grew and grew. And it, it came from more than t-shirts to actual clothing line now. And I thought, how can I do this where when people see Star and Hood, they have to see me before they see it. I want to make it a thing where you like the clothing. You don't have to know who's behind it. Just And then I was in Scotland before and I saw a woman wearing a Star Hood varsity jacket. I'm like, oh, excuse me, I like your jacket. She's like, no. I thought, whoa. She told me that, go away. I thought, I'm happy. I thought, yeah, she don't know me then. She likes the jacket. She don't know who I am. So I thought, the business world, I thought, that's, it's not always about being in front of it. And even with like, from that, I've done the Star Hood, um, I mean, the headphones with Goji company. And then I thought, they approached me. I thought, it's something we can do, but being wise as well, if, okay, well, you can do something with like this amount of time or maybe a couple of years, but don't do it too long. Because then if it, and also the price as well, I thought, who are we targeting? Carlo and so we do a few things and go around that, like, I guess, like, I guess, um, I don't know the word to use, but anyway, just done a bit of research and thought, what colors are popular for the age we're trying to target? And pick, people pick what they like. And I speak to my friend who's at DJ Spyro, was like, you know what, when you've got the wires, make sure it's not the curly one, make sure it's the straight. So every little thing detail, you have to go in, go in, go in and get at the end one. And then also the price, man, because a lot of headphones are really expensive. I'm like, they all kind of do the same thing. Some obviously better quality, but paying £200 for headphones, not it's not affordable for everyone, man. Live within your means, like I always say, man. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to talk to me because for, for years I've had nothing but respect for you. And I think... What you stand you. for, for, for people, you know, especially youngsters, is the fact that you've never given up and you, you, yeah. you adapt to the times as well. You know, you, yeah. every time you release music, you stay true to yourself. You, you do different yeah. things with your businesses as well. So honestly, I think you're an inspiration to, to younger people as well. And I'm grateful Thank that you've you. given me your time today. Thank you. Yeah. And just one, one quick you. question, actually. How much has being a Lewis. father changed you? Yeah. Lewis. Okay, um, have father, has being a father changed me? Before we get into that, Lewis, like, can I ask you one question? Of course. Two questions. Um, are you into football? Yeah, Tottenham Hotspur fan. <laughs> I, I don't mind them, actually. I don't mind Tottenham. Tell you the truth, it's Arsenal who I can't stand. Only because all my friends support Arsenal, so I've always had it from, yeah, but you're this, you're that, you're glory, hun. I'm like, right now, you're not, I'm not, not glory, honey, now, am I? So, what's happening then? But um, and then obviously Tottenham because now you lot got um Marino, who we kind of to to jog on, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, um, um, back to the real question. Um, um, I'll far answer your one. Have you got any children? No. Oh, okay, okay. Now Sorry, being being a parent, see, father was that, like it just changed me, man. It just made me so much more like understanding. I, I knew what life was, but I, I always respected women, but. The respect has got so much higher because I thought I respect my mum and every woman around. But for my mum misses that she gave birth, I thought what they go through and what had they become like such mothers and that helped me become like I said, it was that you're a dad and I'm a father. Yeah. yeah. That's how I lead it. Yeah. Well, honestly, I'm so grateful that you give me your time today. And I, I'm you know pleased no to interview you. Thank thank you, thank you for introducing me to Zoom. 